Well, welcome to this, the final video in the series of designing a model railway. And this one is entitled The Three-Legged Stool, talking about track plans, the electrical design and the operational design and how those three elements fit together. Now, there are hundreds and thousands of layout track plan options that we could look at. But to keep things simple, what I'm going to do is to focus on the layout I intend to build. That will give us a framework and give me a framework so that I can explain some of the aspects of the three-legged stool to you. Now, let me put, first of all, a caveat in, and that is that this layout is wired for DC operation. If you run digital DCC, then your electrical design will be somewhat different and you won't have to worry about some of the isolator sections that I have to worry about. That said, the operational track plan and electrical design still do fit together and that's what we're going to explore in this video. Now to start with, what I've done is to strip away all of the scenery, the buildings and the words, so that we can actually have a look at the track plan, if you like, laid in the bare. And you'll notice that a lot of the colour has disappeared because I've taken out all of the sections as well. This is purely and simply what the track would look like when it's laid down. You wouldn't see all of the colour sections. I've left the platforms in just to give you a flavour for what's where and the baseboard edges so that you can see the definitions of the various areas. So let's start putting some of the sections back in. And while I'm doing that, I can explain to you why I have wired the thing the way I have and sectionalized it the way that I've sectionalized it based on the operational interest that I'm trying to create. I've started by putting in the up main line in red. You can see it runs from storage right round the layout. The storage sidings themselves are only different colours because I need to know the length of each one for operational purposes. And the design tool I'm using simply allocates a different colour every time you create a section. But they are all part of the up main line. Now you'll notice that there is a break in the red line in the bottom left hand corner. There's a yellowy brown section. And this is an isolator section allowing me to hold a train isolated in the platform at Yarslow. That then allows me to add or detach vehicles to the rear of that train if I want to, or to hold that train whilst something else runs out of the goods yard across the crossovers on the far left hand side and around the red line into storage. Of course, if you're running DCC, such isolator sections are not required, but in DC, this is what we need to do. Well, here's a design tip for you. When you're using running sidings, and if like me, you're using two trains on each siding in storage, you need a separate track for continuous run. In my case, it's the top one. It's the shortest of all of the sidings. Back to the main layout, and here's the down line, the blue line put back in. And that's followed by the yellow and the green lines. Now the yellow is the storage area for the trains coming out of the terminus. And that includes the purple section, which holds spare locomotives. Clearly, the yellow has got to be independent from the green to allow the station to operate under one controller and for a separate operator to be able to shunt engines around and get trains ready in the storage sidings. The green section, which is Trinity Square Station, has a number of isolators as you can see, some at the end of platforms, some all platform, others in the loco storage area. Now where those sections fall 
how many of them there are and how big they are has come about through a lot of thinking about how this station is going to operate. I need to be able to isolate locomotives, hold complete trains, and shunt the, the goods yard at the bottom separately from various other parts of the station. You'll see in the loco holding area that I can isolate different engines and hold them whilst moving others around. Again, if you're DCC, not an issue. With a DC layout, isolator sections are key. Now I've coloured in Yarslow's goods yard. It's actually two different colours. The platform sidings and the exchange sidings on the left, plus the, the old wagon works, is under one section, whilst the local goods yard on the right is under a different section. That's very simply so that I can be shunting the local sidings on the right whilst the train arrives or departs into that back platform at Yarslow. And here's another design tip for you. You'll notice the end of Yarslow platform is a short siding. It's for brake vans. It's always useful to have somewhere to store your spare brake vans out of the way. In this case, that's where the branch brake van lives. And talking about the branch line, here it is coloured in. Again, it's in two sections. The first section between the station and the engine shed at the bottom, and the second section from there around to the traverser. This allows me to run a locomotive from the engine shed into Yarslow station, or vice versa, without interfering with the shunting that may be going on further down the branch. Now as we go back to the big picture of the layout, let me talk about some more holistic operational ideas. I find it important that you operate a train at the point of its arrival. So in my case, the Yarslow controller will bring something out of storage or down the branch. And I need to be the other side of the room if I'm running a train out of Yarslow or if I'm operating a train from Yarslow along the branch into High Marsh, for example. From an operational standpoint, that all sounds fine, but here's something which we must bear in mind. If I'm standing at High Marsh and I want to bring a train out of the bay platform at Yarslow, I really need to see it. So on a bigger layout, sight lines are really important. Similarly, on bigger layouts where you may have more than one operator, it's key that the guy at High Marsh doesn't have the ability to push a few switches and take control of the yellow sidings behind Yarslow, the red and the blue crossovers and all the branch track, interfering with what else might be going on on the layout. If you look at a lot of the big layouts, very big layouts, and I'm thinking of the McKinley Railway, you'll know that they have a central control office. And whilst this all sounds rather highfalutin, you can really see the point of that. In my case, because I'm using what's called cab control, that master panel will actually be at Yarslow. So the operator at Yarslow will be able to allocate sections to various operators as required. The Yarslow operator will in fact be able to control the whole layout and who does what on it. In order for that system to work effectively, the layout needs to be sectioned properly. So now you can start to understand why Trinity Square Station is a different section from the, from the goods yard sidings. The Trinity Square operator 
can be shunting his wagons backwards and forwards, whilst the operator, perhaps in the storage area, can take control of the green and yellow sections, and that passenger train can depart. If Trinity Square was all under one controller, the shunting would have to stop and the engine would have to be isolated. Clearly, that's both cumbersome and unprototypical. Thus, you can see how the triangle of track plan, your operational wants, and the electrical systems have to fit together in order that the layout can work the way you want it to work. And I have to say, don't expect to get this right first time. You'll find, not unnaturally, that if you change something operationally, you may need to lengthen a siding, add a siding, change the way the layout is configured, and of course, change the electrical requirements. You may need to isolate an engine in a certain place. You might need to separate part of a station from another part, as I've done at Trinity Square. All these things need to be thought about. Sometimes it works in reverse. At Yarslow, originally the loop behind the platform and the old wagon works were separate became quite clear quite quickly that in fact if the wagon works was being shunted you wouldn't be running a train into or out of that platform anyway it would be unprototypical be unsafe and therefore it made more sense for that to be one big section the idea that the operational requirement of the layout informs the track plan is no better demonstrated than in the storage sidings. Here, the very bottom track, brown section, is actually a cartridge. And these cartridges will hold all of the trains that run very occasionally. It might be a breakdown train, a ballast train, a horse box special, a special passenger working, whatever it is, live on a cartridge and only be pulled out when required. In this way, I'm not filling up valuable siding space to trains that I only see once in a blue moon. Another requirement is that I can sit at Yarslow and simply call trains out of the storage sidings as I want them. In order for that to work, each of the sidings, which hold two trains each, need adequate isolator sections, one in the middle and one at the head, to stop the train from either hitting the train in front or fouling the exit lines. As an additional precaution, on each siding, there is a four inch section at both ends deliberately inserted to ensure that the point work is cleared. The track plan now comes back to inform the operational design. The length of track I have left for each storage siding will determine how long the trains are going to be that I can store. These both in turn inform the electrical design. I need to make sure that the isolator sections are in the right place and by using relays on the point work it gives me the option of having point control both at storage and at Yarslow and a mimic panel at Yarslow telling me exactly how the point work lies and therefore which train will appear next. And when you think you've done it all, just check for those silly errors. Are these platforms long enough to run around the train that you want to run? Have you got your catch points in the right place? Is that storage yard big enough for everything you want to hold? 
including those extra engines that you're bound to buy in the future. I'm sure by now that you appreciate there's a million things that can affect the operational design, the track plan and the electronic design and they all basically interface with each other and I could go on talking for another hour but it would bore you stupid. Hopefully you get the idea of the various aspects that I'm looking at. So there we go. That's the three-legged stool, that's how it works and that for me is where most of the time is spent just fine-tuning and honing in your design, making sure that you've got it exactly as you want it. And once you get to that point, you've got yourself a model railway. The whole point of this video series is how to go from a blank piece of paper to having your perfect layout. And I hope that some of the steps that we've talked about will help you do that. That's the end of this series. Thank you for joining me and staying with me throughout it. There's more to come as the layout that we've been talking about turns into reality. The work on that will start within a few months and I'll put a series of videos on this channel showing that development. Until then, stay safe. See you soon.